Hi, and welcome to the show. There's, there's something new going on in ADM community schools. It's an only issue that's been going on. If you went to the board meeting of the ADM community schools, you were there to discuss the issue of bullying. Now, that meeting comes a day or two after a 14-year-old boy committed suicide because he was being bullied. Now, at Monday's board meeting, now at Monday's board meeting, the parents say they've had enough and they are demanding answers. Tonight, a look inside that board meeting as all the parents and the students address their concerns to the ADM school district. Will there ever be change or will everything go back to the same old, same old? Here's Lindsay Burrell. Bullying is a huge issue. I experienced myself last semester. Um, I was being threatened to get jumped. I was receiving texts and calls from random numbers while I was at work, home, with friends, anywhere. It wouldn't stop. During the meeting, many former and current ADM students stepped forward, saying that while at school, they were repeatedly told by other students to kill themselves. Parents sharing their children's experiences with bullying, saying that they constantly reached out to school administrators and the school board, but nothing changed. Those in attendance tonight had a clear message that this issue has to be addressed to ensure that no more lives are lost because of bullying and that children feel safe while at school. We're coming to you, not because we're blaming you, but the change starts with you. We as parents need you to jump on board and start making the changes because you're the board. You are the board and the change has to start with you. And Elias, parents and Adel community members have flooded my email, sharing their personal stories, providing photos of instances of things happening at the school, videos of students fighting in the hallways, and emails that they've sent asking for help from administrators. Now today, I also spoke with the superintendent over the phone to discuss the issues, and he told me he was waiting to speak until after tonight's meeting to hear what the community had to say. All right, Lindsay Burrell, we know you'll stay on top of it. It's a lot different than when these adults were going to school compared to the kids nowadays. So we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see, I guess, what kind of changes they come up with. Thank you for that report tonight. But there are changes that are going to be made. But now let's get to what, let's get to our issue where, let's get to the, I mean, <laughs> sorry. But now here's what's happening as we know. We know that the, but if you've been not around to talk about what happened, excuse me, if you've not been around to to uh, watch the issue of bullying, we focused in on Amanda Kirsch who committed suicide at the age of 13 or 14. After a viral video that had happened, now the whole world was all was up were was all over this. I was all all open in this when I, when I first heard the story. And we blame the schools for not doing, for not doing anything that would happen. Just one hour ago, just one hour ago, there was another bullying incident where parents pushed you in bullying after the son's death. And in the wake of that, going back to New Jersey, Just take a look at this. Because let me tell you something. I do not like it when people are being bullied. Bullying is a very serious issue. A lot of schools do not take this very seriously. And if schools were to take this very seriously, they'd already be having zero tolerance policies which say bullying is strictly prohibited. Hey, look. Parents full of anger and fear protested today outside of the New Jersey high school after a 14-year-old student died by suicide. As CBS 2's Christine Sloan reports, they claim the school has not properly handled some cases of bullying. Today, it was parents protesting what they call a culture of bullying here at Central Regional High School in Berkeley Township. She 
They gathered in front of Central Regional High School in Berkeley Township, New Jersey. Some parents with students in the school, others with children who one day attend the high school. We're going to advocate for the children. The protest coming in response to the death of Adriana Cush. The 14-year-old died by suicide after this disturbing video was posted on social media, showing students attacking her at Central Regional High School. Her father, who's hired an attorney, believes the bullying and reposting of the video drove her to kill herself. Sean O'Brien says his daughter Brianna was bullied at the school for months before he pulled her out. The school's never done anything. We've had issues. My, my cousin's children went here. She had issues years ago. I started getting really depressed and I started acting on it. I went to, I told them that I was having thoughts. I never told them that I started cutting myself. Brianna says after seeking help and returning, the school put her back in class with the person who bullied her. I was in the same class as him, and I was seated next to him. A public relations firm is now representing the school district. We reached out to the firm, but no one has gotten back to us. We've also left messages for the assistant superintendent. Superintendent Trianta Phyllis Parla Panitas resigned soon after Cush's death. Parents believe social media played a role in Adriana's suicide. What I would like to see personally is some kind of policy implemented to where it's illegal to post something like that with malicious intent. Personally, I think the cell phones should be left at the door when they go into school. You know, there's just a lot of the drama going on with social media. Meantime, the school board meets tomorrow night. It's unclear whether the media will be allowed inside. In Berkeley Township, New Jersey, Christine Sloan, CBS 2 News. We'll stay on top of this story, and we'll give you more updates as it goes along. Still ahead, what parents, what the what the victims, what the victims say in the state in Michigan State University after a horrific shooting that happened. But coming up next, these parents are pushing to end bullying after a son's death. It was my son's call to action when we return. Stay with us, Kaylin Peterson. The name may sound familiar to you from KCCI. If you heard about the, the suicide death of, of Casey, you may have known what, what known would happen, but the parents are now telling their sides of the story and a whole town is trying to fight this bullying issue and put it to an end. Take a look. Comes and goes where you're completely incapable of barely of even breathing barely gutted with grief lindsay and dale peterson say their hearts are shattered as they try to piece together clues from their son kaylin's suicide note the last thing my child wrote to me my oldest son was dead don't give up when i first read that it didn't make a whole lot of sense And then shortly later, we saw his his last Snapchat that he posted to the world. Kaylin Peterson posted this message before his death, saying, don't let this school forget what they have done. His parents say they are now learning about a deep-rooted bullying problem in the ADM school district. His, his friends are telling us, they're starting to tell us some things that were going on. It's, it's a nightmare. But none of them want to be there. And none of, but that's just that they're scared and they don't want. These kids are afraid of retaliation. They're afraid that if they get named as the person that came, came forward, it's going to be them that the bullies go after. Peterson say Kaylin never wanted to go to school, but never told them why. They're now calling for a stricter no-tolerance bullying policy so no other children end up like their son. Then a simple follow-through and punishment and repercussions for their actions. Stop letting the bullies bully. Classmates, friends, and community members formed a long line at the visitation Wednesday. The pain so deep you could feel it in the room. I honestly believe it was my son's call to action. He wanted change. Grief looms over this community as they struggle with how to move forward. One thing is for sure, Kaylin's parents plan to carry out his final wish. We're going to find a way 
one way or another to help these kids, to stand up for them, give them a voice, let them know they are loved, they are important, and we need them for tomorrow. In Adele, Laura Terrell, KCCI. And now we know what happened. We now know the name of the person who went to the ADM school district. But, like we talked about before, bullying is just a very serious issue here. We focused on this for six years on this broadcast, and nothing is being changed. There is one, the two words we forgot to use are this, common sense. Common sense would have seen that, oh, your child's being bullied. What can we do? We have counselors. We have we have counselors, superintendents, principals who don't do a damn. We have principals, superintendents who don't do a damn thing. And when you try to bring up the bully subject, people just sit there and say, "Well, boys will be boys and kids will be kids." It just doesn't matter like that. If your child is being, if you're being, if your child is being bullied, they need to learn to go to the principal. Tattling is not snitching. And throughout the six years, we focusing on a bunch of bullying, from racist bullying, cyber bullying, social bullying, just any type of bullying that you can think of. And really, number one cause of truancy is bullying. And they're staying away from school because they don't want to be bullied. I've been bullied. I know what it feels like. But... But now there's new claims. I mean, now, but now this is just a issue not to be not to be thrown under the bus with. But a lot of times it's all like, "Hey, we need to put a stop to this." Excuse me. If we do not put a stop to this, it's going to continue on and on, and we're not teaching kids common sense. People may say, "Yeah, but" all the time, but "but" just means forget everything I just said. Here's what I really mean. There is no but here. There are commercials out there that talk about this. A bunch of commercials are out there or PSAs that talk about this. And I may show them to you today, but... It won't, but that's going to be on a throwback Thursday when we talk about this. So that's that's just on the future. That's just probably on a throwback Thursday when we start talking about this. But there's still a lot more to come in this broadcast. Coming up, what the uh, victims and the police say happened after after what happened at Michigan State University where a shooting happened. The very latest from from the local news. But first. That bus incident video, if you remember on Monday, we focused in on bad behaviors on the school bus. But there is one video in particular that we have not fo that we have I have not showed you, and I'm gonna show that to you. Stay when we return. Stay with us. Almost ten years ago, if you were on a school bus, you may have popped up on this video that had happened. This was from Foodie Mess with 8.8 .8 million views in just 10 years. Wow. Started calling after I heard her say she was calling for backup. The whole thing started when he gave his friend a hug who was having a down day. It was blown way out of proportion. With tiny more context, this kid has started this thing where we compliment the bus driver every day as we get off. I'm not sure what happened, but they each got to his bad sides. Most were sided with the kid mainly because the whole thing was taken a bit too far. He didn't start yelling until she stopped the bus and forced us to wait for whoever she called for backup. We have a new bus driver now. No information was really given out. I'm going to play you this clip and a warning. The language you're about to hear, some of the language you're about to hear and see in here is explicit. I don't. So please ask your kids to leave the room right now. I'm serious. If you do not want your kids watching this, it's not going to be fun for you to see it. But we have, to, we have to be aware of what's going on in our buses and what our kids are doing. Here's the video. Fucking ridiculous. Grow up, Rhonda.
Okay. Yeah, please come. You're okay. fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, what was that? It said you're fucking F U C K I N G ridiculous. Oh Thank you. 
still. There's a way behind us. <laughs> Thank you. 
a bit silly. Now, what we described, what we just saw there, every bus driver has the right to call for backup, whether it's the school principal, whether it's the security officer, whether it's the police. They have the right to do whatever. And in the case of Matt, what he did was just unacceptable. It was a stupid reason for them to stop the damn bus because he hugged a student. It's not a stupid reason. It's insubordination. Insubordination means a failure to comply with a reasonable request. Let me play you a clip from the principal's office talking about insubordination. Two clips, actually. Here's the first clip. Here's the first one. Don't you dare disrespect your mother in this room with me. Insubordination has been an issue in any school that uh, I've heard of, seen, or been in. Absolutely. One of our teachers came to me with a disciplinary referral that uh, she had on a student that was being insubordinate in her class. Discipline notice here from Miss Green's class from yesterday. I mean, I've been in Mr. Hunter's office a couple times. It's not that big a deal for me anymore. And tell me the whole story as you saw it. I was sitting at the table and Miss Green said, uh, what are you doing, Justin? I said, uh, sitting here right now. And she said, well, you, you need to be doing something. I told her that I left my books in my truck. I think she said, that's your problem or that's not my problem or something like that. Did you ask to go get them? I don't know. I'm not sure. Justin's a senior. We, we've uh, we rode this horse across many creeks, and no one in there heard you ask to go to your truck to get your stuff. Nobody. You told the teacher that no, you weren't going to do what she had directed you to do. What this is considered is insubordination. I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before, and I was cranky. I don't think okay. I ain't straight when I'm okay. this. I, Justin, I get up every morning and I have problems thinking just like everybody else, but now there's certain things we have to do and certain things we can't do. Looking in your file, you've had one offense already. Our punishment for the second offense is five days in school suspension. I'm not looking forward to in school suspension one bit. The sooner I get out of there, the better. Thank you, son. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, what did he do that was so long? Well, in the corner of this point of referral, he would... Teacher told him to do something, and he and he's like, I'll let him bucks in my truck. That was a case of, no, I'm not going to do what you directed me to do. In this case, it's insubordination. Here's, a, here's the second clip, and then we're going to take a break. Take a look. Hand over the phone. I'm tired of telling you guys. This is to be off, put away, out of sight. My style of discipline is black and white. Say so you've done the crime, they're going to do the time. Insubordination is not taken very lightly at the end of the day. If you disrespect a teacher, Mr. Rett gets pretty pissed. I'm a tough administrator, and when a kid comes in for the same offense over and over and over, I have no tolerance. What's up, Doc? What did you say? What's up, Doc? No, 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 no. You know better than that. How do you properly address someone? Sorry, Mr. Uh... Okay. Anthony has been disrespectful to his substitute teacher. You seem to be... On a regular basis in my office, just this month, we have a series of disrespect, skipping class, insubordination. What's insubordination? I don't know what that means. 
what do you think it means, Anthony? I have no idea. Someone's submarine. As many times as Anthony's been in the office, it comes to me as a shock that he doesn't know what insubordination means. You're not following instructions. You're not following directives. Your teacher sent you down on a referral because you were rude. It wasn't a teacher, though. It was just a substitute. Excuse me? I mean, it's not like it's my real teacher. Subs don't know what's going on. They're not even real teachers. They just sit there and do nothing. She doesn't, she's not even teaching the class. She doesn't know what she's doing. She does qualify to be a teacher. Yeah, well, she's not teaching. She's just, like, chilling around her desk. And Anthony, 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 this is your fifth referral, and I've not been successful with our standard methods of discipline. Tried detentions, tried student conferences. Your mom has me on speed dial. With this one, it's going to be a one-day suspension. No, it will be Friday. On Friday, I can't do Friday. I get a qualifier for Nationwide Tour. I'm a very big golfer, and on Friday, yeah, I have a qualifier for Nationwide Tour. And I'm a little worried that I'm not going to be able to go. That's not fair, because it's like, this is my big shot to actually, like, do something. And, like, do what I want to do in life. I don't have a choice here. You've backed yourself into a corner. The tour's not going to look at that, though. This is not about the tour. This is about respect. You need to show respect. Period. I'll see you after your suspension's. I'm pretty pissed off because I got suspended and now I can't go to the nationwide tour. So it's pretty upsetting. He has to earn it. In this case right here, what you just heard, he was being insubordinate. He was being rude to a teacher. That's insubordination. That's being that's insubordination. We're not being rude personally, but but you know what I mean. I'll be right back. If you remember on Monday, we focused in on the Michigan school shooting that happened. Now, there is the very latest that we know so far. The killer was previously charged with a felony, but was able to buy guns. Here is why that happened from CNN. Years before, Anthony Dwayne McKenna killed three, three Michigan State University students and critically wounded five others. He was charged with carrying a concealed weapon. A felony count that would have prevented from him from being able to buy a gun if he was convicted. The felony case never went to trial. Instead, a 2019 deal allowed McKay to plead guilty to a misdemeanor, pre misdemeanor possession of a loaded firearm in or upon a vehicle. The Ingram County's Prosecutor's Office said Tuesday McRae spent a year and a half on probation. Now, questions are abound whether, over whether the slaughter at Michigan State on Monday evening could have been prevented. McRae purchased two guns in 2021 in Michigan. An, a law enforcement source said one was tor a terrorist pistol and the other was a high point 9mm pistol, according to the source. It's not clear whether it's not clear whether those two weapons was used in the deadly rampage that spanned two parts of the campus e in East Lessening. It's also unclear why McRae, a 43-year-old with no no known ties to MSU targeted in the university. He died from self inflicting gunshot wounds hours after the first shots rang out on campus Monday. But the assailant had a known as pocket and threatened other shootings hundreds of miles away in New Jersey, authorities said. The great grew up in New Jersey, said the note was said in a note that there was twenty of them who will carry out shootings, according to the source familiar with the investigation. There's no longer a threat in New Jersey. But there's still a hunt for answers. After trying to plead deal, McRae's probation was extended to a couple times. The Michigan Attorney General told CNN about this. Nestor was two sons of the university, taken by the week's district tragedy, and wants to know why. Among the other questions, John answered whether McRae knew anyone on campus, what type of firearm was used in the mass shooting, and whether it was one of the guns McRae purchased in 2021 following his plea deal. It could have been a probation violation. We'll see on top of this, and we'll let you know what happens. Now, has it been, now let's find out if there's anything going on in Oxford, Michigan. It has been a year, but will Ethan Kubler stay in jail or be, or be held in the Juvenile Correction Center? There is now the very latest. Let's find out. There is now the very latest from USA Today. The former Oxford High School student relieves shooting trauma at MSU. Mom, I just want to come home. 
After more than a year of grieving for the loss of their high school schoolmate, a former Oxford High School student was re-traumatized Monday evening in Michigan State University as a gun violence once again shattered her sense of security. This was from the victim. This is from the uh, person that was at the uh, Oxford High who, the day of the shooting. As for Uvalde, if you watch that ABC News special with John Quinones, you may have realized there's more updates. But just 20 hours ago, from the Texas Tribune, the lawmakers, Uvalde state lawmakers face an uphill battle raising the age limit for semi-automatic guns, but they're trying anyway. You see, in the state of Texas, you have the right to carry a gun without a license. You can carry a taser without a license. You can carry a pistol. You can carry... You can carry any weapon you want as long as you don't have a license. In New York, you gotta have a license. Like we talked about in our Guns in America Day in the Life special, we focus in on a bunch of things from gun safety to purchasing guns, everything. There has to be tougher regulation and age limits. I mean, you can't have a six year old carry a gun. A toy gun could be good because it's a toy gun, piece of plastic, quite out loud. But you can't bring that to school. But yet, it ain't happening. The problem is probably not going to happen because lawmakers don't want to take away their, everyone's second amendment rights. And from the Texas State Senator, the Texas State Senator announces common sense gun safety bills. There we go. Now we have common sense. Common sense to really raise the age and not take away the rights. We'll keep looking into these issues and we'll give you an update of what's going on happening on a future episode. Stay with us. We have more insubordination coming up. There's now more insubordination going on. Like we talked about, insubordination is a failure to comply with reasonable request. Take a look at this next clip. In high school, we have mandatory recycling. We feel very strong about it. It's not just something we're made to do. All right, Rick. Come on in, please. Thanks. You've only been here a couple of days, and I have a write-up on it. I'm not too happy about this, huh? Uh, I was told to pick up his Napo can that, was, that he was kicking. I wasn't kicking it. He throwed in the regular garbage inside and he doesn't recycle. Is there a problem with that or is this about protecting the environment? No, this is about if the teacher asks you to do something and you don't do what they ask you to do, then it becomes insubordination. Well, what? That I don't recycle? Did I offend her? All my thoughts on this teacher that told me to pick up the can? Probably forgot her meds, man. It's ridiculous for uh, a, a one of the teachers on duty to tell me to pick up a can and throw it out. Only after that, throwing it out for her, but she told me to reach in there and recycle it after that. She got it for one. So when I, when I looked in that trash can, I was like, no way, there's a uh, from last year in there, and uh, there's ketchup, uh, fries, flies flying around, you know. There's no way I'm reaching in there. There's a reason why we have a recycling bin and a regular garbage can, all right? Now, if you put it in the incorrect can, whatever, okay, who's supposed to then pick it up and put it in the right one? Um, the lunch ladies that you have there. <laughs> no, we don't have maid service here. It wasn't my can, though. Once you picked the can, it changed ownership, all right? It became your can. The bottom line is this. When an adult tells you to do something, you do it. When you say you're not recycling, you are trying to push the teacher's buttons. Am I right about that? Uh, you're right about that. Okay, so and that's so unnecessary. Unfortunately, because you did disrespect our teacher, you have to be given a central office attention. All right, I never want to see your name on a discipline slip again. If you think something's incorrect and you're not being treated properly, don't let the mouth go in here. Find myself or find your guidance counselor, okay, son? All right, I know. Right. Take care. Right, thanks. Okay. We expect you to achieve and be the best person you can be and be respectful of the adults that are in this building. Now, was that insubordination right there? Yes, it was. Because the teacher told him to pick up the can, he kicked it, he said, I don't recycle. 
So that's a definite example of insubordination. What's the moral in this? What's the lesson in this? The lesson in this is simple. Common sense. Do what you're told. It is that simple. It is that simple. If you don't do what you're told to do, that's insubordination, whether you're in school or workplace. In the workplace, if you don't do what your boss tells you to do, you're in trouble. You're going to be fired like that. You don't need to take, if, you, if you don't listen to your boss, it's like that. You don't listen to your parents, then you're going to get your butt whooped. It's different from what's, it's different from your parents' house. It's different, it's, it's different from the parents' house. It's also the same thing at work. You don't do what your boss tells you to do, you're fired. If you don't do what your teacher tells you to do, you're going to the office. It is that simple. That's common sense. The common sense is do what you're told. But keep your, but keep your comments to yourself. It's, hey, pick up the trash. Yes, ma'am. Hey, sit in your seat. Yes, ma'am. Will you please do your work? Yes, ma'am. Stop talking. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. It's always, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Listen, we all make mistakes. And at some point, we have to learn from our mistakes. We call that forgiveness. You may be forgiven, you may not. You may commit a murder and people may forgive you. People may, you murder someone, you may be forgiven. Or maybe you, or maybe, I don't know. You may be forgiven, you may not be forgiven. You may be sentenced to death. Forgiveness is forgiveness. That's the bottom line. Coming up on Friday, facing danger. Because it's happening in, it's happening here in Corpus. Here's a preview. Life can change in an instant. What do you mean she's gone? No, she's not. I just talked to her last night. What do you mean she's gone? It's especially heartbreaking when something could be done. It, it, I can't stress enough, this is an immediate danger to the public. Hundreds of thousands of people travel the Harbor Bridge every year. All the while, a major flaw poses deadly consequences. But it's pretty evident that there is a problem down there at the, at the uh, south end of the Harbor Bridge where people are turning up the wrong way on the exits. On a special edition of Chris 6 News at 10. We will get the car stopped one way or the other. What law enforcement is doing to try to save lives? And the lasting scars left behind for families. I believe it's been that long already. It feels like yesterday. It feels like yesterday. And those at fault behind the wheel. My heart was hurt. I was numb that had I actually took somebody's life. Facing danger, how many more have to die? That's on Friday. Now, here's a story that you'll see coming up soon on this broadcast. I want that for you in just a minute. Now here's a story you'll see it coming soon on this broadcast. <laughs> Tonight, an unprecedented walk down death row. You've never been this place before. Cynthia McFadden enters the world of a 41-year-old man preparing to pay the ultimate price for his crimes. Are you afraid to die? No, 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 no. You'll see the chilling rehearsal for the execution. And meet the man who will give the final signal. He might lose his life inside his soul. Lawyers plead for a man's life. You believe Antonio James is innocent of these crimes? Absolutely. Hear the anger of the victim's families. People heard my uncle screaming, begging for his life. He begged for his life. And they shot him in the head. And the anguish of the condemned man's son. That's my fault. I have to out there. See this extraordinary meeting between a convicted murderer and the son of his victim. As the scheduled hour draws near, and we thank you, Lord. from the prayers outside to the preparations inside. The second one is pancreatic bromide. It's going to stop him from 
breathing. The last meal. Bless his food. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, you will be there for the judgment at midnight. That's coming soon, and that's our broadcast on Give Me and Break Wednesday. Going into Thursday, we'll see you on the GMB YouTube channel for Throwback Thursday. And for all of us here at YouTube and Give Me and Break, I hope you had a great day, and I hope you have a safe and blessed night.